The U.S. president is in New York. He's going to make a big address at the United Nations uh, General Assembly here. Uh, and we will cover that when it happens, uh, not today, but tomorrow yes. and the rest of the week. So you're looking at live pictures of five of the Americans who are in this prisoner swap. They are about to get off of the plane in, in Qatar, uh, and then they'll be out making their way back to America. No doubt there is a lot of relief from them, uh, held um, you know, against their will, obviously. And this is all coming at a time when the U.N. General Assembly gets underway today. We are very fortunate to have General Jack King with us today. And, General, we are just waiting here to, for a glimpse of these Americans. These are live pictures of the plane that has just landed in Qatar. Let's get your take on this prisoner swap today. Well, there's a lot of talk about the swap, and, and certainly we're delighted to have five Americans return after coming out of even prison, which is just a hellhole in of itself. I can't imagine the joy that their, their loved ones feel about this. But the swap isn't the issue here. And you can tell that by the fact that three of the people that are being released uh, are not even going back to Iran. Two are staying here and one's going to another country. What this deal is about for the Iranians is the money. It's the $6 billion. And I think we have to be somewhat skeptical. I know the administration is well-intentioned here, and they're trying to say they, the money's going through a third party in Qatar, and they're going to monitor that, that and ensure that that money goes for humanitarian needs. Look it. We're 43 years into a relationship with this regime. This is the regime that blew up our embassies, blew up our barracks, started a hostage-taking camp campaign almost the first year they took power, killed our CIA station chief as a hostage, nearly brought down the Reagan administration as a result of trying to trade arms for hostages. I think we figured out what we should be doing here in terms of hostages, and that is do a swap for sure, but don't do any money. Why? Because the money winds up in the hands of the malice regime leaders, and it's going to fuel what they're trying to achieve, dominate and control the Middle East, is what they're up, what they want to do. And the second thing is, provide as much munitions as they can to help Russia defeat Ukraine. So if, if the administration, I recommend this to them, if, if they really want to convince the American people that there's going to be strings on all this money and it's not going to go for malign purposes, then report out to the oversight committees in the House and the Senate, do it behind closed doors, and show them where the money's going, and keep doing that. My judgment is the money's going to wind up in the hands of the Iranians, malign leaders, and they'll do what they want with it. Well, uh, six million dollars is a lot of money. Six billion just blows the mind, General. Uh, the Obama team was obsessed with its relationship with Iran. A lot of that had to do with concerns about nuclear weapons, et cetera. Uh, the Biden administration, yes, but not, not, not as much. I mean, it's, it's pretty clear and just under their public statements. But uh, they did the deal anyway. So please explain to our audience, what is the obsession with the relationship with Tehran? Well, I think we've, we've seen two administrations took a different approach to Iran, and that is to try to appease them, to try to work diplomacy to establish a, a peace and stable Middle East. And I think that has failed miserably. The only thing the Iranians truly respect is resolve and strength. And, and we've seen that when we've been willing to confront them. So I, I disagree with the basic approach. Remember what happened here. The Biden administration came in, Bill, and almost immediately, within the first 30 days, began to reach out to the Iranians to go back to the nuclear deal. And I think the Iranians see that as weakness on the part of the United States, as opposed to what should they have done, what could they have done. Well, they could have doubled down on the Trump sanctions, some of which had some loopholes, and that always happens, and you see those things happening. They close those loopholes, reach out to the Arabs and strengthen the hand in the Middle East. What did they do? They stiffed the Arabs, unite with Israel against the Iranians, and, we, and they stiffed Netanyahu, who came back into power. Absolutely all the wrong signals for a, a regime that wants to dominate and control the Middle East and control the flow of oil out of the Persian Gulf. Why do we know that? Because they say that every single year is their objective. And we should be aligning ourselves to make certain that that doesn't happen. 
General, I do think it's also interesting, just for, you know, as Americans watching this, and, and, and you see the relief of, of the, I mean, these might be the family members um, that have come with the Americans who are being released today that you can see live on your screen right now. And obviously there is joy and relief, and I can understand that. Yet today here in New York, you have the sanctioned president of Iran flying on a sanctioned aircraft on a Biden-approved visa to enter the United States for this UNGA meeting, while we know they are actively plotting terror attacks on U.S. citizens and $6 billion lands in the bank account by the time he lands. And I think when people wonder about the trust in institutions, this is part of it. Oh, yeah. I mean, this is a rogue, malign regime. You see what they do to their people when they demonstrate against them and protest just basic freedoms, like how should women dress? And what do they do to those people? They shoot them, they kill them, they torture them, and they put them in jail. They do this in full public display. This is at the heart of this regime. They are morally bankrupt, and we know that for a fact. Now, do they are members of the United Nations. Do they have a right to go to the United Nations and sit at meetings? Yes, they, they have that right. And they certainly would be doing that if the United Nations was someplace other than, than New York City. But also, we have a microphone at the United Nations. And we could point our finger at them in terms of what this malign behavior has. I will bet that that does not happen, that we don't try to isolate this regime for its behavior, its history of killing Americans and our allies and partners in, in the regime, despite the fact we have made this deal with them. Our mission should be to organize against them, Dana, and to isolate them for the malign regime that they really are and to help the people in Iran as much as we possibly can to move against this regime and overthrow it. Mm. President Biden makes his address to the U.N. tomorrow. I don't know in what capacity this topic comes up, if it does at all, General. Uh, it seems the address is more aligned to um, call to mind the war in Ukraine and uh, Russia's invasion there. I'm Steve Ducey. I'm Brian Kilmey. And I'm Ainsley Earhart. And click here to subscribe to the Fox News YouTube page to catch our hottest interviews and most compelling analysis.